<laughs> Woo! Now we are in business. It's business. It's business time. Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today I'm back home in Kentucky where I'm from, and I decided I wanted to do something really special for you guys. So we're cooking my favorite barbecue item, bar none. It's beef short ribs. But they're not only beef short ribs that you might find in myriad different places across the country. These are Wagyu beef short ribs. So we're talking about the creme de la creme of barbecue. It doesn't get any better than this. So I hope you guys enjoy watching this half as much as I'm going to enjoy eating this stuff. So stick around. You'll see what it's like. We're going to cut into them at the end and give them a taste test. But we'll show you exactly what we're doing along the way. <laughs> Now a lot of people think I'm from California, but I'm not. I came home to Kentucky for Christmas to see family, things like that, and while I was here, I realized that I could get my hands on some amazing Wagyu beef. And so I thought, well, yeah, pull the trigger on that, do that for sure. And so then I had to overcome the obstacles of finding a smoker, getting wood, all that stuff. As you see right here, I was able to get my hands on an Old Country Barbecue Pits Brazo smoker. Thank you to my brother James, who also has one, so he let me borrow it. He also gave me some wood, but unfortunately that wood is so crazy green and unseasoned that it's almost impossible to use. What I have to do is actually dry it out in the cook chamber next to the short ribs as long as possible before I put it on the fire so that it burns cleanly. So right now we've got a pretty clean fire going, so I'm pretty happy about that. Now as far as the beef itself, I have a Wagyu brisket, which we're going to do tomorrow. You'll see that in another video. And today I'm doing the short ribs. And I'm going to treat them both basically the same way. So the short ribs, if you want to see exactly how I trim them, you can take a look at my How to Smoke Short Ribs video, or Beef Ribs, I think it's called. And the process is basically expose the top side of the meat and then season. So for this, because it's Wagyu and I want that Wagyu flavor to shine through, it's just salt and pepper. So kosher salt, coarse ground black pepper. I use about a 60-40 mix, so 60% black pepper and 40% salt. Sprinkle that liberally on the top and on the sides, make sure you get the sides. And then again, I leave the membrane on the bottom just so that they all stick together. So throw them on the smoker, cook them at 275 with pecan wood. My favorite wood is always pecan. And so I'm using pecan to smoke this at 275 until the internal temperature reaches 190. So at this point in the process, we've gotten them on there for, shoot, I don't even know how many hours, but it doesn't matter. The time is not important. That's one note. People always ask me, okay, I got a brisket, I put it on the smoker, how long do I leave it on? It's not about the time. It's about the quality of the meat. Does it have good bark, right? Is the temperature right? It's not about the time. Anyway, let's take a look at what we got. So right here we've got these beautiful short ribs. These things are like five inches thick in the thickest part. It's amazing. Not only are they like the three bone ribs that I'm used to, but these are five bones wide. This is a monumental hunk of meat. To put it in perspective, these five bones weighed over 12 pounds. So this is a pretty remarkable cut of meat, not only because of the Wagyu beef itself, but also because of the humongous size of these ribs. They're ginormous. So you might ask, what makes Wagyu special? And a lot of people would say, well, it's because of how much fat there is, which is partly true. So Wagyu beef has tremendous marbling. So there's lots of fat running in the meat itself, which means very moist and tender products in the end. That's only half of the story though. The fat is not only different in terms of how much quantity, how much fat there is, right? It's different in terms of quality. So the fat of Wagyu cattle uh, melts at a lower temperature because it has more unsaturated fatty acids in it, which means basically it melts at a lower temperature, meaning more moisture in your mouth. Because what you perceive as moisture is usually rendered fat rather than water. And I use this example all the time, so pardon me for using it again, but how many of you out there have had a pot roast where it's a piece of meat that's soaking in water, I mean just surrounded in water, literally, but you take a bite and it's dry and stringy, it's because it's not water that you perceive as moisture. It's rendered fat, which is why Wagyu beef is incredibly moist when you eat it, and that's why people are willing to pay a lot of money to have something so well marbled. Now with the beef short ribs, there should be an insane level of marbling and should be just glistening with moisture in every single bite you take and every slice that you make you should see lots and lots of moisture. That's why Wagyu is special. Now this particular Wagyu um, I got is 50% Wagyu and 50% Holstein. And for me, I was thinking that 
about Holstein, I thought, well, Holstein, those are, those are dairy cattle because my grandpa had a dairy farm and he had Holsteins. I know you milk Holsteins. But apparently Holsteins are prized in Japan because they also have a lot of marbling. Who knew that the dairy cow could have been so good to eat? But that could be uh, one reason why a lot of people are kind of on this fad of eating retired dairy cow. Apparently it's the great marbling, the exceptional marbling, and good flavor that make it worthwhile. So that's why Wagyu is special, and that's why we're cooking it today, and that's why I pulled out all the stops to try to make this happen, finding new camera equipment, finding new sound equipment. I have a lapel mic here, which I don't usually have. I have a new camera that I've never used before. Thanks for letting us borrow it. Um, a smoker that isn't mine, wood that I had to go buy, a uh, thermometer that's not mine, a spray bottle that's not mine, vinegar that's not mine, uh, wood that's not mine. All this is borrowed, so many, many thanks to all the people who helped make this possible. You know who you are, so thank you very much. That picture looking good. All right, now to update you guys on exactly where we are in the cook right now. We're cruising just a shade above 250, looks like 255. And so let's see, I'm gonna have to add some wood, but let's see where we're at in terms of the cook here. So right now I can see that I'm starting to get good bark and that's looking really nice actually. Um, a deep, deep dark red color. Um, and yeah, these look like medical examiner gloves, but you gotta work with what you got. And this is still feeling really firm, like really tight. And so, I know, we're not done yet. But, let's just check some temps here. Where are we? Looks like 166. So we still got a little ways to go here. Because I want to get this to 185, 190 internal before I wrap it. Because I'm trying to make the maximum amount of flavorful bark on the exterior of the meat. So, this isn't quite there. And I want to render the fact that it's in there so much fat that I'm trying to make sure it renders well so that we have delicious meat that's not going to be ruined by big chunks of unrendered fat in there. So we've still got a little ways to go. We're going to keep it rolling at 275. Maybe we'll kind of crank it to 285, 290 if it looks like it's just dragging along. But uh, we are probably at this point seven, eight hours into this cook. So I haven't been pushing them too hard. I've been letting it go down to 250, you know, trying to get it up to 275, but not burn anything. It's been my, my big concern. So maybe crank up the temperature a little bit, get it to that 190. When we have that deep, dark, almost black bark, that's when we're gonna wrap it. And so finding butcher paper has been a tremendous difficulty. Thank you to everybody on Instagram who's telling me, check out this place, check out that place. And I think ultimately what we're gonna have to do is use unused, um, grocery store bags, like the paper bags from the grocery store. I called all the hardware stores around, called like all the grocery stores around, and in Louisville, it's just stuck, you know, trying to, trying to find butcher paper last minute. And by the way, if you're ever wondering, it's pronounced Louisville. It's not Louisville or anything else, but Louisville. You're welcome. Now, one other note about the butcher paper dilemma is, I sent my wife to Meyer to try to find some butcher paper while I was start getting this cook started. And um, they said that they had it when we called and then we went there and they apparently didn't have it. But a big shout out to Jeff at the butcher counter there. He gave us the butcher paper that he uses. My wife brought it home. I thought it was about ready to, you know, be a victory lap, you know, we found butcher paper. But unfortunately it was waxed paper and we couldn't use it. But many thanks to Jeff for trying to help us out even though he didn't have to. You know there's a special technique to milking a cow? I never got it, but it's like you gotta like, you gotta like squeeze and pull, but it's not like you don't just yank on it. It's like you, you, you just like massage it out. It's like this or something. I don't know if you can see that. My aunt was great at it. So we had cats at the dairy farm. And so the cats would be like roaming around in the morning and she would like take one of the cow's teats and just squirt at the cat. And the cat was just like, just, you know, thrilled about it, I'm sure. Okay guys, I just want to give you an update on what we're working with here and we're going to evaluate whether or not it's time to wrap, okay? So, here we've got our beef ribs and they're starting to look really good. You see how that bark is nice and set in, nice and dark? So we're getting really close. So with the bark the way it is now, we could wrap. 
but I want the internal temperature to get a little bit high. Right now it's about 180 degrees, but I want it to get to 190 so we render that fat really well, but we don't want that bark to burn. So I'm gonna keep spraying it with the apple cider vinegar uh, water mixture that I always use just to make sure it doesn't crust up too much, but just give it a couple sprays uh, every 30 minutes or so and you should be good. Wait till you get to 190, then wrap. All right, after 15 hours, these things are finally done. They have beautiful bark on the outside, but they're so thick with like multiple layers of meat. They're not cut quite like any short ribs that I've seen before. This side almost looks like a staircase. You have the first layer and there's kind of a membrane and then the regular layer. I think this is what beef ribs usually come with. And then there's another layer of meat on top of that. And the way it came actually was with even some fat on top of that. So. They look amazing, they smell incredible, and now the moment you've been waiting for and the moment I've been waiting for, we're gonna cut into them. So here's a, a trick to make sure that it's easy to cut through these. You flip them over and cut from the back side. It's kind of cheating, but it makes your life a million times easier, so I recommend doing it. So I'm gonna flip them over and cut off the first rib and we'll take a look. Are they all gonna stay together? Oh. It's wanting to fall apart. All right, so we got our first rib cut off of here. And for those of you who cooked beef ribs before, this might look a little strange. So what we have is actually another layer of meat on the exterior surface. And this is much leaner than this meat right here. And in ordinary circumstances, that would probably be bad, but because this is Wagyu, there's so much marbling that even this isn't dry. So it almost looks like you have a chunk of beef rib here and then a slice of brisket that somebody put on top. So it's like a bonus brisket. Anyway, it is full of moisture, just dripping moisture here. And when I was cutting it, it was going and you see juice just coming out under the cutting board. So I am not able to wait any longer. I have to try a piece and see what it tastes like. Here we go, Wagyu beef rib, take one. So rich. This is the richest beef rib I've ever eaten. Like when you bite into it, it seems like it somehow coats the entire interior surface of your mouth and it's wonderful. I mean that in the best possible way. So these beef ribs come from a farm uh, in southern Michigan, and I'm gonna put a link to them in the description. It's Stutzman Brothers Meats, and um, Matt Stutzman, he let me try this out, and I'm so thankful for that. And uh, I'll give you his information if you wanna get some of these for yourself. Yeah, uh, I would encourage you to give it a shot. This is amazing. It's not like something you're gonna be able to find at all in your local grocery store. And even if you're somebody like me who's got you know a meat supplier, this is still difficult to find and it is amazing and totally worth the effort to get it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel and also turn on the notification bell so that every time I put out new videos like these Wagyu beef ribs, you can get a notification that that video has been put up and you can learn how to make all the same kind of barbecue that I'm making so your barbecue is the very best it possibly can be. But until next time, see you in the next video.